Hey, Nia. Hello, 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 everyone. Hello, hello. Hey, son of Anwa. Honey, hi. Hey, Nia. I see you coming up. Hi, Lee, to edify. God bless you. Hello. Hi, Melanie, one. God bless you as well. Hi, hi. Hello. Oh, happy Christmas Eve to you as well. Hello from Houston. Hello, Nikki is sanctified. Come on, Prep Girl, uh, California, I want to say. Hello to you. Uh, God Rich, hello to you as well. Uh, to Miss V Brandy, hello to you. Hi, Missy Price, God bless you. Brown Butterfly, I want to go with that. Hello, Be the Intercessor. Hello to you as well. Hey, hello everyone. Um, if you can, if you can hear me, please give me some hands up. I just want to do a quick scope on fasting um, and then also talk about the challenge that starts on uh, the goodbye challenge that starts on Sunday, January 1st. Many of you have questions in regards if you can still join, you can. You can find the link in my bio on Periscope. If you do not know how to get to the bio, you can simply click, click on my name and then you will actually see the link as well um, if you can go ahead and share this periscope with all of your followers as well as those that are on Twitter and Facebook that'll be great um, I just want to go ahead and give us a quick scope um, in regards to the challenge and fasting because many of you have some questions about fasting and so I can take you on a quick journey with me in regards to my prayer life and my fasting life and then we'll go ahead and enjoy the rest of our Christmas Eve for for me, I have to continue to cook, so this scope will not be long at all. Uh, the the challenge is called the Goodbye Challenge. It's for seven days. Uh, we will be saying goodbye to fears, isolation. We're going to say goodbye to ungodly soul ties, um, any corrupt communication that may be proceeding out of our mouth, um, even saying goodbye to not being consistent in our prayer life. And then we want to say goodbye to any ineffective uh, ministries that we may be a part of. Of, that we may just be fillers and we're probably empty in this season and we need God to restore us so we'll probably pull away from those things or we'll allow God to train us and build us for that ministry that we have been called to some of us have been called out of some places out of some relationships and we're going to say goodbye we're going to begin our year in victory and we don't have to be bound that's why I told many of you maybe you want to start a fast and some of you have some questions in regards to fasting so I always go back to Isaiah 58 in regards to fasting. Um, is this not the fast that God has chosen or the fast that was chosen for us? Um, anytime that you go on a fast, I always say that you need some directives. Um, I never go and just go fasting for the simple saying, well, today I'm fasting, but I don't know what I'm fasting from. I don't know why I'm fast, what I'm fasting for. So for me, going into 2017, I'll be doing a 21-day fast um, in regards to my future. Um, uh, two weeks ago, I learned that I was afraid of my future and that a lot of my fears had come up because I was afraid to fail. And so this season, I will spend time in regards to cultivating my future through prayer and fasting. And what I would do is I would partner up with God in those 21 days and I would invite him in so he can go ahead and show me what my future looks like looks like and then I will begin to uh, what we call prophetic intercession I'll begin to announce what my future looks like proclaim what my future looks like prophesy to my future I'll fast for my future and then my future just doesn't include just me by myself about what God is doing within me and through me but it also include those people who I will be a part of their life in this journey of 2017 so I'm always asking God who am I to post myself against this time as far as being in their lives, who do you want me to pour into? Who is it that I'm a train? Who is it that I'm a mentor? Who is it that I will disciple in this season? And so uh, fasting is not only beneficial for you, but it's also beneficial for those that you are called to. It's beneficial for uh, your future and it's beneficial for your opposer. So in this point, when you begin to fast, you assassinate your enemies within your own soul through fasting. Why? Because now 
now you begin to condition your soul with God's will, with his heart. You begin to condition your soul and your heart with his word. So when the enemy comes in to tell you that you can't do something or he's reminding you of your past, you can say that therefore if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away and behold, all things become new. And when you start to feel, feel like your fears are coming up and fasting, God allows you to deal with your fears and he'll tell you exactly what love has not yet to be perfected because when fear comes up that means love has yet to be perfected in some area of your life and he'll begin to point those things out to you and not only do God just address the things that may be wrong with your soul but he also begins to condition you for your future and he begins to show you exactly who you are in him and he begins to show you through his lenses of who you should look like and what the end result should be and so when you begin to fast well if it's a one day a three day a seven day I would tell anyone don't just do it one time don't just go on a fast train yourself to beat your flesh into submission throughout the entire year throughout your entire existence why because fasting will make you selfless and it sobers you up fasting is not just denying yourself of food but what fasting does it con to conditions your soul so that way you'll be able to pour off into to somebody else so it's not just about you it is a lifestyle yes tiffany it is a lifestyle and so it's just not pushing back a plate just to simply say that you fast but it builds a personal relationship with with the father you become more intimate with him you're more sensitive to his voice you're more sensitive to his leading you're more sensitive to what he has to say at a point in time it causes you to obey quickly without doubt without fear Fasting, it kills that flesh. And what I would tell anyone, according to Matthew 7, whatever you do in secret, especially with prayer and fasting, it brings about rewards. What is your reward? Answer prayer. And then according to Isaiah 58, what happens when you fast? You are broken out of bondage. You are no longer oppressed. You are free in your spirit. You are free in your mind. You are free in your soul. And you are free to live. And you are free to be existing into your future. You push yourself from out of your past and even out of your present into your future. So I challenge you on this in this season of your life, push back a plate for the sole purpose of your purpose, of your future and the future of someone else. Some people say, what do you fast for? You can fast because you want to confess of a sin, repentance. You can fast for healing. You can fast for some things that may be in your soul. So that's spiritual, spiritual fasting. You can fast in regards to you want to see a nation be free. So that goes beyond you. There are always something that you can fast for. Go ahead and crush your flesh because fasting, it afflicts that flesh. It afflicts the soul and it may feel like pain. And I'll tell anybody when you're fasting, you feel angry. It never feels good. You start to feel angry. Some things that you thought was dead in you start to come up because God has started allowing that stuff to surface to let you know it's still in you and he wants to get it out of you. So fasting never feels good. But at the end of the day, the end result, it is good for you. So go ahead and afflict your flesh. So that way you can condition your soul even for the seven day challenge. You have fears. I have some fears. Don't be afraid to be transparent with God. Don't be afraid to be transparent with your support group. Don't be afraid to be transparent even with your community or with your leaders. If you have some fears and you need someone to help walk you out, go ahead and ask God who in this season that is designed to help you with even your fears. One of my fears was of my future. I sat down with a young lady at a table over dinner and she told me this when I kept saying I'm looking for the enemy to show up because he always shows up I'm so used to fighting that I'm so used to him showing up so I'm always looking for him and I didn't realize until she said don't make the devil your idol that a light bulb when I what I'm making the, de the devil an idol, so now I'm not just looking for him to show up because God said that he has given me power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing by enemies shall harm me. I am more than a conqueror. I am a overcomer. He has caused me to triumph. I am victorious, and even when he shows up, I have enough word, power, and authority within me because Jesus Christ himself lives in me and he works through me that I don't have to be afraid 
afraid of what he may be doing in my present because at the end of the day, I still will see a fulfilled future. Why? Because the thoughts that God has towards me are good and they are not evil and they are to give me an expectant end, which is prosperity. He causes my soul to prosper and he causes me to prosper at the end of this journey. I will fulfill my future and whomever he called me to pour into, I am going to do exactly what he called me to do. So I challenge you to say goodbye to anything that is trying to oppose you for your future. Say goodbye to fear. Say goodbye to for unforgiveness. Say goodbye to bitterness. Say goodbye to ill will feelings. Say goodbye to ungodly soul ties. Say goodbye to uh, corrupt communication for surely it will corrupt you. Say goodbye to anything that is not of God. Get in his secret place. Where that place where you're secluded. The place where you can cut off traffic. The place where you don't have to perform. Get into that place where you can begin to hear the, the voice of God in regards to why you should fast. How long you should fast. What direction he wants to take you in. What your future should should look like, how you can partner up with him and then go in that direction. Begin to prophesy over your future, over your children's future, over your business, over your leadership, over your community, over the nations. Because at the end of the day, fasting is not just about you. It should break somebody else free, but you can't break anyone free if you still bound. So challenge yourself to be free in this season of your life. And I promise you that it is for the greater good. Today, is the day that you're going to challenge yourself to break free, that you no longer be oppressed, you're no longer going to be afflicted by hell's agenda you're no longer going to be focused on what God, uh, focus on what the enemy is doing to you, you're going to focus on what the plan and the will of God is for you his purpose for you, challenge yourself to break free, and even I sense, even for those who are married, who may be challenged with your spouse especially wives, I prophesy to you that you learn how to fast, and you learn how to pray and you begin to see the king that is within your husband. I tell you today that you can get more done on your face than you can in the face of your husband. God is a God of covenant. If that man is not verbally abusive, mentally abusive, physically abusive, and y'all just clashing because of personality, I tell you, be strengthened in your prayer life and your fasting life because a wise woman knows how to build her house, but a foolish woman tears her house down. You you need to push back your plate, get on your face, and watch God shift. But the first person that he's going to change in that marriage will be you. So I prophesy now that you begin to learn how to fast and pray and begin to allow God to start telling you about you first before you start talking about what your husband is not doing and the things that he should do. I tell you, you can win your wars on your face. You can win more wars in fasting and prayer. Get in that secret place. I don't know why I should shifted. But for you who wants to give up on your spouse, I don't care if you separated at this moment. I'm telling you, God can restore, restore all things. And I'm not telling you something that I heard. I'm telling you something I know. I was a babe in Christ when God came along and I partnered up with his agenda, his will, his plan, and his purpose for my marriage. He taught me how to pray for my husband. He taught me how to fast. But the first person he dealt with is me, my heart, and the way that I was seeing things and the things that I was releasing out of my mouth. Why? Because I was releasing more curses out of my mouth than I was in regards to the blessings of God concerning our covenant. And today we still stand 20 years in marriage, getting ready to divorce in the year of 20,000. We both work in ministry together. So I know God can restore all things. I don't care what has happened in the past. He can, he will, he is God. And if you are willing to do the work, I promise you the end result will be victory. And you will say it was the Lord thy God. That would be your testimony who restored my marriage, who joined this thing back together. That was once separated. You will give God the credit. Why? Because you put in the work and you was able to hear his heart, his mind concerning your household. God is not a God that wants to divide. He's a God that wants to unify. So today be the God, be let God be the one that he 
who has joined. You say God put that marriage together, I guarantee you he can keep it. And so now I'm a shift, but I'm going to tell you, go ahead and study Isaiah 58. You can study Joel too. And throughout the Bible, you will see they didn't do anything but prayer and fasting, prayer and fasting. And they always partner up with God. This is when you get into prophetic intercession. And I'll talk about that tomorrow in regards to prophetic intercession. When you be God, begin to partner up with God and then you say, not my will. And he'll begin to tell you what his heart is. And then he'll tell you how to pray it through. And the end result will always be glorious, victorious. And you will be an overcomer and you will begin to see because some of us want to pray our will. And what we're doing is asking God to give us a serpent when he wants to give us a blessing, a, a, a gift from him. But we are partnering up with hell's agenda. It's not about your will. It's about his. And sometimes we think we're hearing God with clarity, but we have not pushed back our plate to sober up enough to hear what he's saying and to see what he's doing. Get in your secluded place. Push back that plate. I know we're getting ready to eat some big dinners for Christmas, but after Christmas, decide today if you're going to do a one day, a three day, a seven day, and when you get into your new year, you should go for the 21 day. I don't care if it's a Daniel fast where it's just fruits and vegetables or if you decide to do a partial fast where it's six to six. Sober up so you can know what your future looks like. Do not be behind schedule when it comes to your 2017. God should already have spoken to you about what it looked like, but you should be prophesying, announcing it, declaring it. You should be doing something. You have to do the work. Don't sit there and be like, well, God told me. No, he told you, but you still got a part to do. Who's going to cultivate what he showed you? Who's going to announce it? Who's going to proclaim it? Who's going to declare it? You have work to do. So let's get to it. Let's be challenged in this season to do something great. My greatest thing I am believing God for is a people who are free in their mind, their spirit, and their soul. This is why I'm challenging you to go on that seven day goodbye challenge with me in regards to being loose from the band of wickedness that you're no longer yoked up or afflicted by hell's agenda it is not too late to join the challenge you can find the challenge in my bio it is the good the goodbye seven day challenge it starts on january 1st which is on a sunday and it ends on saturday january 7th you can go to my bio click on the link and you can join i pray that this scope has blessed you you got work to do and so do i Let's see what our 2017 is going to begin like and what it should end. That's what I'm looking for. God's end result. And I don't care what hell plan is. We have already overcome. So we don't have to worry about it. Even when it looks like the weapon is forming, it will not prosper. And I would never come off my post. I'm not drawn back. And I don't care what is going on. I'm going to focus on heaven plan and not hell's agenda. And I say that to you. Focus on heaven's plan for your life and not hell's agenda. I love each and every one of you. I pray that this scope bless you. Get to it. Write down your goals for 2017. Get you some direction and focus. Get you some support in scriptures and decide whether if you're going to do a one day, a three day, a seven day. Decide if it's going to be a 21 day. If it's going to be a partial fast with water only. If you're going to do a Daniel fast with just fruits and vegetables. Decide if you're going to do the seven day. But whatever you you decide align yourself up with God's will push back that plate and I guarantee you you will see results and it will be in your favor and once you benefit from it somebody else will be able to benefit from your life as well keep in mind fasting is not just about you once you break through you should be able to help somebody else break through as well. I love each and every one of you. Take care of you. Merry Christmas. Go spend some time with your family and friends. And keep in mind, if it looks like some issues are in your family on Christmas Day, go ahead and be transparent. Forgive on purpose. Love on purpose. Restore on purpose. And build up somebody even in your family. Don't you dare go try to work with the people in the church to help them get free and your family is still bound. Put that in your bucket and I'll see you next on uh, tomorrow. Bye-bye.